tutorial on how to open up an image in Lightroom Classic and put it into Photoshop and do a few little edits to it to get started with the main editing. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that your Photoshop and your Lightroom Classic are both on your dock. Um, your dock or all your applications down here and that will pop up when you put the cursor down there. So right now I only have Photoshop on here so if I wanted to find Lightroom Classic there's a few things you can do. First thing you can do that's really easy is you can just go up here to your search magnifying glass and type in Lightroom Classic and then double click on that and it will open up on your dock for you. Another thing you can do is find the Adobe Cloud or Adobe Applications um, icon at the top here and then scroll down and find your Lightroom Classic and open. And when it opens, it's going to open up on your dock and also on your desktop. Okay, so now that you've already gone through and learned sort of the basics of how to use Lightroom, right? Not necessarily how to use it, we're going to do a little bit more work on that, but you know where things are for the most part. You know your library is here, you know if you want to edit a photo, you go to develop and you can edit it over here on the right. We can spend some time exploring these later. Um, and you also know that if you're trying to find your photos, um, you can organize them over here in the folders. So right now I'm going to be using this image here. This is a photo I took um, at Yellowstone National Park. It's called the Grand Prismatic. Maybe you've been there. Um, it's a, a large water. Um, it's not a geyser because I, well, it might be a geyser. I don't remember. There are so many different types of um, natural, beautiful natural things at uh, Yellowstone. But this one is unique because it has all of these different um, sort of earth minerals and lichens around the opening of the water that makes it look like a giant rainbow basically. So that's pretty neat. Um, this is the aerial view. You can hike up and stand on a platform and see it from the top and you can also you can see this little like um, pathway here. You can walk around it too. Alright, so I've got this in here and I could do a few edits to it but honestly if you're gonna put it in Photoshop I would just save your edits for Photoshop. These Lightroom edits are, if you're trying to edit things really quickly, or if you want to create like a mass um, edit with a preset, you could create a preset with these, um, and then you could gather a ton of photos and then just um, change them all to that preset, um, which is a really fast way of doing some edits. But we're not going to worry about any of that now. We're just going to have this photo, and we're going to export it, and I'm going to put it on my desktop. So hit export, and then you get to tell it where to go. So export to my hard drive, um, which is exactly where I want it to go. And then exactly where on my hard drive, export to desktop. I put it on the desktop so I can see it, and then I move it later. I could put it in a subfolder, and I could title that folder, uh, maybe Grand Priz. Um, and then you also want to name it. So you go to, you can scroll down and see all these custom names, file name. Um, you could do custom name and then Grand Prismatic Top View Hike and then you hit export and now you see that it's going to end up on your desktop under Grand Pris and there it is okay so it's always sitting there for you so for now I'm going to close Lightroom CC and we're going to talk about how to open up your photo in Photoshop there are several ways you can do it the first way, which I love to do because it's fast, is that I just take it and I drag it and I dump it directly on Photoshop and there it is opening up in Photoshop. Now my Photoshop application is already open so that was really quick. Sometimes it takes a second for it to open. You see this tab up here, that is your photo up here. So if I click the X then I'm going to be closing that photo. If I wanted to put another photo and kind of work on two photos at the same time, um, I could find another photo, like maybe this one, um, and I want to show you something that happens that you don't want to happen. You don't ever want to grab this and drag it directly on there because it's going to implant itself on top of your um, Grand Prismatic photo. This is a waterfall in Yellowstone as well. Um, <clears throat> and that's that's fine if you're doing like overlapping double layer kind of things, but I don't I don't really want that right now. So I'm going to actually delete that layer. I'm going to commit it first, and then I'm going to delete it because I don't want it. So if I wanted this to be open in Photoshop but not 
in this photo, then I would grab it and drag it and put it right on top of the icon, and then it opens up in a new tab. So I have my Grand Prismatic tab, and I have my Waterfall tab. This is Yellowstone Falls, I think. Um, so there you go. So you've got two photos in there. You can work on both of them if you want to, or just one. But I am going to close this one and just work on this one. Um, I did want to show you one other thing. We've been shooting in JPEG. JPEG is a compressed file and it's a smaller resolution. I had you doing that this year because we didn't have access to Photoshop until now, but I think we're going to spend a little bit of time um, shooting in RAW, camera RAW, which is um, the highest resolution format of shooting a photograph. And we shoot in camera RAW if you're a professional photographer, especially if you like high res photos and you want to print your photos. Um, so you're going to see that file type. If you see the abbreviation NEF, N-E-F, that is a camera raw file. So here's one here that I'm going to actually open up. And I wanted to show you the difference between these two because they're going to open up differently and it might confuse you if you have a camera raw image that you're trying to open up. Okay, where is my little baby image? He disappeared. You know, I'm going to skip that one. I think I decided not to do that when I first started doing this tutorial and I deleted that image off the desktop. So we'll, you know, that's a little too complicated to go into now anyway. So we'll skip the camera raw demo and I'll show you that some other, some other time when we start actually shooting in camera raw. But basically it opens up in camera raw and you can edit it there, kind of looks a little bit like Lightroom, and then you open that up into Photoshop. There's like an extra step. So we have a JPEG here, so we're all good. So there's a couple steps that you need to learn um, to do to every photo before you start your main edits. The first one is checking on the size of your image. So you go up to image and then image size, and this window will open and here are a few things that will tell you the image file size which is really important especially if you're trying to share your image or upload it if it's just massive then you need to work on that um, this little link here is important to have it clicked on so this is off when there's no lines connecting and that's on um, this is your aspect ratio so if i change my width to eight then the ratio of the height adjusts to fit the original ratio of the photo. I, I want to keep it that way and because I don't want to warp my image. Okay, um, Resolution of 170 and up is fine for what we're doing in this class. So I'm going to leave it at 240, but um, a little note about resolution. Resolution's tricky. Okay, If you have a small image, a small resolution, like maybe it's 72, which you're going to see a lot with JPEGs, maybe um, even ones taken on a phone, if you try to increase the resolution of your image from 72 to like 300, it's going to be super pixelated. But you can go the other way. So if you have a photo that's 300 and you want to shrink it down to 72, you're not going to lose pixelation. You're going to, it's going to be sharp. So that's, that's a rule I want you to remember is that it's really hard sometimes to increase the resolution unless you kind of mess with your size too. Like you can increase the size and lower the, um, you can increase the resolution and lower the size um, to make it not pixelated. Anyways, um, I don't want you to turn in anything that's larger than eight by 10. So I usually take the longest side and I make it 10 and then it adjusts um, and nothing above 300. So go ahead and adjust your size. In your window, if you want your photo to um, be smaller, you want to see the whole thing, shortcut is command and then minus. And you can shrink it down. And then if you want to shrink it up, command and plus. So I like it to fit the screen. I'm going to teach you how to use a lot of these different tools for editing photos. Um, but the ones you need to know now are pretty simple. Move tool is important when you're using multiple things or you're making selections and moving things around. Um, it's also kind of a reset. I like to put my cursor on this tool and do other things because it doesn't get in my way. Um, another tool that's really important we'll use a lot is the quick selection tool. This is um, this tool will allow you oops, hang on one sec, allow you to make a selection. Like for example, if I wanted to select just the sky, I could select just the sky, 
and I could save that selection and then I could make edits to only that selection. So that's the neat thing about this tool. And there's ways of even refining your selection even more. Um, you notice when you click on every tool, you're gonna have a new menu of things you can do with that tool up here. So it's really, there's a lot of neat stuff you can do. Um, if you wanna deselect something, a shortcut is Command D and it deselects. If you wanted to select something, like if you wanted to select everything, uh, D, Command A, okay? Uh, crop tool is going to be really important here. You can enter a ratio up here if you want a certain ratio. Um, and that's as simple as that. If, you, if this ever happens to you and you're like, I can't click on anything else, what's happening? This grid keeps popping up. Um, you're on the crop tool and all you need to do is click um, return, which gets you out of it. Okay. Uh, we might use a little bit of the healing brush tool, which fixes blemishes and stuff, which we won't do a whole lot of in this class. Brush tool is going to be really important when we're masking things. Um, you can see on here, this, this is neat. The new Photoshop teaches you things in the toolbar. Um, so healing brush tool, brush tool, eraser maybe, um, stamping tool. A clone stamp is really cool when you're trying to... Um, just like this little image is showing you, it's repeating things. So you click on one area and you stamp it somewhere else and you're basically repeating that thing that you just stamped. Um, and that's pretty much it. We might do a little bit with the color swatches here. And um, over here on this side, these are your layers, your adjustment layers. Um, and here are your adjustments up here. We're going to learn some of these. Um, and that's, we're going to keep it simple. That's a, all the time we'll probably have this semester for learning Photoshop, how to edit a photo. So now we have this beautiful photo in here, but we want to make some tweaks on it, right? Um, we're still not done with the things that we need to do to set it up, though. We assign the color, right? So we go to edit and assign profile. Okay, so if that happens, um, if you ever are trying to do something and it's not letting you do it, you're in a tool that doesn't allow you to do it. So right now I'm in the crop tool and I can't do anything but crop. So I always like to go back up to the move tool because then it, it kind of frees me up to do the things I want to do. So I'm going to go up to edit and assign profile. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. We want it to be um, Adobe RGB 1998. Remember this is connected to this is the same color profile that we set on your camera. So we want it to sync with the color profile in Photoshop. So click OK. Um, this is kind of a nitpicky thing, but I was taught to do this. And so I think it's, you know, I'm teaching you how to do it. Um, but you could probably get away without doing it too. Um, but sharpening your image, getting it the sharpness that you want before you edit it. Before and after. I was always taught do it before and do it after. So to sharpen your image, you go to Filter, and then Sharpen, and then you go to Unsharp Mask, and then you want to keep your radius at 1, and then you can move your image around. You can choose an area that like, would be good to sort of see the sharpness. You can also move this box around and click on that area. So like for sharpness, I might want like a little dirt and some branches. So the adjustment you're going to be making is the amount. So I want you just to learn, I want you to scroll all the way up to the top, like 500. And see how grainy that looks? That might look cool and that might be what you're going for. And you might be going for something extreme. But that is not a natural image, right? So if you scroll down, you can kind of see, like, I lose a lot of information when I bump up my sharpness that high. It just gets really pixelated and kind of gritty looking and it, it loses its tones, tonal range. So you don't really want to do that. Um, general rule of thumb between 20 and 40 is about the range you want to stay in, especially if you're editing faces. You don't want to like go super gritty and all the wrinkles show up, right? Unless that's what you're going for. So let's just keep it in here and then click OK. Okay, so that, those are the basic steps that you're going to do. I'm not going to get into the adjustment and the layers um, yet. That'll be a different lesson, um, but this is basic, basically what I would do for every photo if I wanted to edit it in Photoshop. These are the beginning stages. Um, 
<clears throat> next lesson I will show you how to duplicate layers here and do a few uh, simple adjustment layers and also how to make selections. All right, thanks.